SNK developed and published the arcade and NES versions of POW Prisoners of War. Did you know SNK stands for Shin Nihon Kikaku, which means New Japan Project? The company started with that name in 1981 before rebranding for the better as just SNK in 1986. POW is not based on any actual war. It involves a fictional military unit and a fictional shadow government, but in World War I, there were over 8 million prisoners of war and all nations pledged to follow the rules of The Hague for the safe and ethical treatment of POWs. It is said that soldiers were more likely to survive if they were captured than if they continued to fight. Definitely not true for all wars. Crazy, right? Now for the game. POW Prisoners of War is a beat-em-up plain and simple. You take control of BART, that's right, BART, and BART is the captain of an Army Special Forces unit simply codenamed the letter M. Your mission is to infiltrate GOON, G-O-O-N, which stands for the Government of Offensive Network, which doubles as the worst acronym and title for any entity ever, real or imagined. GOON is trying to establish a worldwide smuggling ring and you have to purposefully get captured as a POW because you're too bad A to get captured accidentally, and then break out of the armed camp and fight your way to the leaders of Goon with nothing but your bare fists and sometimes the enemy's guns. Because it's a basic beat-em-up on a system that features only two action buttons, B is punch, A is kick, and A and B together perform a jump kick. The jump kick is easy to perform and is the B's knees for most of the game. Enemies take a bunch of hits to eliminate sometimes and the jump kick feels like a safer bet for not getting ganged up on mid-combat. Easily the most satisfying aspect of the game is punching dudes and knocking them clear across the screen. Pow! Boom! Ah! Take it! until it happens to you, ow, then it sucks. Some enemies are carrying guns, and if you knock them out, sometimes it lets you take the gun. You have limited fire with it, but it's usually one hit kill against enemies, so it is effective. You can also pick up knives from your enemies to throw at other enemies too. On your way, you'll find little dwellings or doorways you can pop into. You don't have to, but if you wipe out the enemies in there, you usually get a reward. You'll either get brass knuckles, which double up your punching power, the letter A, which is a bulletproof vest, the letter G, or a machine gun, and grenades. It's usually worth it to get these things, but in most rooms you'll have to take on three enemies at once, or multiple waves of three enemies, so it can be challenging, especially near the end. The enemy AI is all over the place. Sometimes they walk right up to you, smartly trying to kill you for escaping their base. Sometimes they just run on by, and then you feel guilty killing them because maybe they were just out on a jog. It's tough to tell. The bosses are not memorable at all. There are generally two types. There are dudes that shoot and jump around, and there are heavy artillery machines you have to blow up. If it's the dudes, just jump kick your way to victory. You'll have to dodge a spread shot and the grenades they drop, which are basically instant death, but as long as you keep moving, you should be okay. If it's the heavy artillery, the dudes that run out and drop grenades, pick those up and go throw them at the vehicle or helicopter to blow it up. In general, it's not very difficult, and you do get endless continues that return you to the beginning of the stage should you lose all your lives. It does get repetitive though, as you can imagine from an NES beat-em-up. Maybe not quite as difficult or repetitive as Batman Returns, which I covered in this Batman games on the NES video you can watch, and POW is not quite as long either. There are four total levels where you battle your way out of the prison, through an industrial zone, then through a jungle, before finally arriving at the Goon headquarters. I'd recommend it if you enjoy simplistic beat-em-ups and don't mind the monotonous grind that comes along with them. If you enjoy the NES version, give the arcade version a try. It actually lets you play with two players simultaneously, where the NES version is only single player, which is a big bummer for a beat-em-up. As you'd expect, the arcade version is more difficult. Many of the power-ups are gone, there are more enemies, you can't use grenades, and there's also a different final boss. Well, that does it for POW Prisoners of War on the NES. Be careful behind enemy lines, and thanks for watching.